Stop using your gray tank and your water pump when remote boondocking. These are my main tools for making sure that I don't use my gray tank or my water pump when I am deep remote boondocking. I'm trying to stay in the shade because it's a little warm today and I feel a little guilty for saying that because it's only going to be in the 80s. I am high in the Rockies of Colorado. By the time you see this, I'll probably be on the road, but I realized that a lot of people this summer have had it a lot worse and I've been in Wyoming and now Colorado. I, I've had a wonderful summer and I hope that you have too. So how do I keep from using my gray tank and my water pump when I am boondocking. That's what I'm going to share with you today. Now granted, I have a nature's head composting toilet and so that obviously helps a whole lot because I can take my urinal and I, when I first get to a remote boondocking campsite, I dig a one by actually about a foot deep and by two feet long in a foot wide so one by one by two cat hole to be able to do the things that i'm about to share with you with my nature's head composting toilet i don't have to use my black tank at all and i realize that a lot of people don't have that luxury but even if you have to use your black tank for poo <laughs> And, and I always hate talking about such things on video, but it's important and I think it's necessary. And also, I just want to stress that if you don't mind taking your rig or your blue boy or whatever you do to go to a dump every week or so to go into town, then this video is probably not for you. What I'm addressing is I like to go out and I stay if it's a 14 day limit. I will stay 14 days out where there is nobody. <laughs> and then I might go to another 14 day camping area that's within the geographical range that's allowed. And it might be four weeks before I go to town. And I don't wanna have to go to town to do dump or to get water. And so this is about how you can conserve your water and save your gray tank. Stop using your gray tank and your um, water pump when you're boondocking. So if you don't have a nature's head composting toilet or something similar, you uh, still uh, can use like a pitcher to for your urine. Ladies, this is real easy and convenient and comfortable. And, and gentlemen, it did really, you can just use just about anything. But I found that this shape, and you can get these for a dollar to three dollars at the Dollar General stores, um, works best if I didn't have my nature set. This is what I used when I lived in my van. And again, I take it and my nature's head urinal can last about a week before I have to dump it. But I have found that that's pretty hard on the ground. And so I take it and I dump it uh, every few days just so that there's not so much in the cat hole. And again, my cat hole is a foot deep by two feet wide or two feet long and a foot wide. So it, it can hold all of this. And so every time if you have an RV, uh, you are going to the restroom and you are not using a pitcher or something for your urinal, you're having to flush because when you push that pedal, water runs in there. So you're not only filling up your gray tank or your black tank, you're using water from your fresh water system. And so I really recommend that you stop doing that. These are the tools that I use the most to help me stay out the longest. And this, my friend Joan gave me, and I just love it. It helps me dig my cat holes lickety split. And then when I leave, I make sure that I have it covered completely up. And I try to, well, don't try to, I make sure that I have everything buried at least six inches below the ground and that I cover it up and that I leave no trace. I am a firm believer in leaving no trace and leaving a campsite better than when you arrived. 
And um, so a lot of people will even bury toilet paper or something. And I just want to encourage you, please don't do that. Um, I do not do uh, anything like that. I will, um, I will pour my urinal in there. And also, this looks really gross, I know. But this is just leftover coffee dredges because I use creamer. And, and this, I saved this up. I usually only get it about half full. And I don't know why, but I never finish a whole cup. I, my cups of coffee, I should show you, are about like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I always have about that much left over. And so this is about five days worth of not only my coffee dredges, but like when I go to wash my dishes or rinse anything out. And I'll show you how I do that. And I do not ever turn my water pump on. Well, actually, there are three times that I will turn my water pump on. It is to take a shower, to bathe Bandit, or to fill my Berkey. When I am remote boondocking, that is the only times I turn my water pump on. And it is, and, and it is the only time that I use my fresh water source. From my Berkey, I fill up my Brita. <laughs> And that's because I might get my water source. Um, I don't necessarily go and buy filtered water to fill up my fresh water tank. But between my Berkey and pouring it into my Brita, I feel very comfortable with the water that I drink and use for cooking. The other reason that I use my Brita is that everything pours out of the Berkey very slowly. And sometimes you want to fill up, like I keep a water pitcher in my refrigerator so that I have cold water. And sometimes I want to fill up Bandit's bowl very, very quickly, or we're gonna go on a hike and I wanna fill up my hiking bottle with water. I don't wanna stand there and wait on my Berkey. So I keep this pitcher full, but the only time that I run my water pump is again, when I shower or when I bathe Bandit or when I fill up my Berkey. And I've got a video coming up about the 10 things I hate about my water heater and it is a um, on-demand tankless water heater and so stay tuned for that and I'll, I'll tell you about that but um, that again those are the only times that I run my water pump so I minimize my uh, gray tank usage I don't have a black tank I, I, I mean, I, there's one on my RV, but I don't use it because of my nature's head composting toilet. And I'll tell you how I feel about that composting toilet in another video. But um, I, I don't use my black tank and I minimize my gray tank. I, I, don't, I don't put anything uh, down my, my gray tank uh, between my, my using my urinal on my nature's head composting toilet and putting this in my cat hole. Um, I just, I don't put anything down my sink or down, uh, uh, down my gray tank. The way I wash dishes, and I've shared this on other videos, is I have this full of, not full of, but about to right here with Dawn, and then I fill it up with water. And I can fill this up with water about three times, and I use this for washing my dishes. Of course, I start with very clean dishes. And I'm going to have another video coming up on how I conserve trash. After staying out about four weeks, I can go to town with just three or four Walmart bags of trash. And uh, that's very important because you have to have a place to store them while you're camped. And you don't want to fill up um, any retailers, uh, uh, their bins or anything. That's, that's not what we're about. And if there is a landfill or a transfer station, I will go there. But if I only have three or four bags, I can put one when I go to gas. I can put one when I get groceries. I can put, I can just uh, put one here and there. And so it's very important to save your trash and I'll have that in an upcoming video. So this is how I do my dishes and I make sure that they're clean before I wipe down and no, no, res, no food or anything on them before I start. My water bottle is how I rinse everything, including my mouth after I brush my teeth. And again, I will spit into my portable gray tank. That's what I call this thing. And you can get any size that you want. I, uh, I don't put anything down my sink. And then this is how, this is DIY ammonia. A lot of people like vinegar. I do not. Uh, I used to, but I don't anymore. Um, after my brain injury, for some reason, I just can't handle the, sm after, actually after my brain surgery, I can't handle the smell of vinegar and I don't know why. So I do a DIY ammonia for my windows and my floor cleaning and all of that. 
And so between these tools and my Nature Ahead composting toilet, and again, if you don't have one, at least get you a pitcher and um, so that you have, you can use it for a urinal. And my cat hole that I dig and that I make sure that I don't ever fill up um, to where when I cover it up, there's at least six inches of earth that I'm putting back on top of it. And when I leave, there's actually no trace that there was a cat hole there. And some things that I want to tell you about the cat hole itself. Make sure that you uh, dig that as far away from your rig as you are comfortable walking out to. And because it, you don't want to attract animals, don't put food in it or anything like that because they're just going to dig it up then and make, and, and, and you know, your efforts were for naught. So uh, again, don't put any food or anything in it that wild animals are going to want. Take it as far away from your rig as you can. Don't put it anywhere near a water source. Don't put it anywhere near a wildlife trail where they've been walking. You don't want to dig and disturb their habitat. Don't dig on top of any kind of habitat. For one, it might be a rattlesnake den and you don't want to do that. Plus, you, if it's a chippy or a ground squirrel or something, we are not here to disturb other creatures. We are in their environment and we need to honor and respect that. So when you choose a place for your cat hole, be sure that you keep that in mind. And as a former, uh, I used to teach junior high, um, middle school science, seventh and eighth grade. And so I just have to say that I realize putting this in a cat hole or putting urinal, uh, your urinal container, uh, dumping it in a cat hole, that that does go back into the environment because the water cycle is such that, and it, I used to tell my students, think of earth as a jar of pickles. It doesn't, anything that we do on earth doesn't go anywhere. It's not like that it's going to another planet and we get rid of it. I used to hold up a pitcher of water and I would say, okay, class, how do I get rid of this water? And of course they would say, go outside and dump it, put it in the sink, go to the restroom and put it in that sink, flush it down the toilet. They would come up with all kinds of, of ingenious and creative ideas on how to get rid of that water. And then I would go into explaining to them the water cycle, it really doesn't go anywhere. It goes back into the environment, it goes up as rain clouds if it is able to be purified that much and comes back down as rain. We don't get rid of anything on earth. And if you contaminate stuff, then that interrupts the water cycle. So why am I purporting that you can put it in a cat hole? Well, because we are like a jar of pickles and nothing goes anywhere. It doesn't matter whether you dump it at a, a waste station and it goes into a, um, a, a sewer treatment plant or some sort of cistern. It is still on earth and it, it will still come back around somehow, some way, someday. And I, as a biologist, believe that what I am saying to do is just as healthy, if not healthier, as long as you make sure that you're not putting chemicals and foods and other things in there that can disrupt this cycle that I am, I'm referencing. So I hope that that makes sense. And I hope that using my simple tools, these aren't very many, but it will help you along with what I'm gonna share about compacting trash coming up, it will help you stay out in remote solitude boondocking, I think, for as long as you want. And you can stop using your gray tank and your water pump. So I hope this helps everybody. We'll see you down the road. Keep on keeping on. And in case you're wondering where Bandit is, he's in the shade underneath the RV and he doesn't want to come out. <laughs> we'll see you down the road.